had complained about Kelly slashing him. This time it looked like Esposito was holding Kelly and faking the hold on the hood. The benches are empty now. Everybody's getting out on the ice. It's getting a little tense. are in the middle right now the officials be taking out mark Islip on a one-on-one situation he might have gotten his stick up a little bit too high that cut the player now bridgman and he slipped bridgman now and he slipped are starting to go out of center ice and everybody's milling around dave boyd has eddie johnstone oh great fighting out there now the white and johnstone, and johnstone. And Dave Hoyda is starting to get some punches in, but they both got pretty good control of their right arms. And Ed Johnson is Here comes Davidson. Here comes Davidson. And here comes Bernie. Well, Davidson really jumped into the cup off Dave Hoyda as Dave Hoyda was getting the much the better of the fight. And now Johnson's on top of uh, Dave Hoyda, and everybody is milling around there. And they're right at the blue line. The flyer blue line, that is. And now uh, Andre Dupont and uh, Wayne Dillon are going at each other. Holmgren is being controlled by Phil Esposito as he's trying to get in. And Don Ore and uh, R.S. Kendrachuk way down to the right all by themselves are wrestling. And it all started with the fact that Clayton and uh, Mark Kieslip were exchanging a few uh, Pleasantries in the corner there after Blaine was cut and it might have been by he slipped his stick and then Bridgman took after he slipped when they were throwing punches and it appears that now just out in front of the penalty box that he slips on top of Bridgman with the linesman in control now White has gotten back up and he's going out to Eddie Johnston again as he was taken off the first time by John Davidson, and now Dave Hoyda is getting uh, much the better punches, and Johnson is still trying to hang on to control Hoyda and not being able to throw any punches. And he's really getting his arm free now. Johnson can't even hold on to his arm. Now they're punching down to the ice, and, and referee John, right from John DeMeco, is going to separate it finally. But Davidson really charging out of the ring to go to grab a hold of Dave Hoyda as he was getting much the better of the fight with Eddie Johnstone. I'm sure those two saw one another when they were playing respectively for the New Haven Nighthawks of the American Hockey League and Dave Hoyda for the Maine Mariners. Richmond and Heaslip were the first two peers to get into the uh, action throwing punches and that's when everything erupted. The players, uh, both benches kind of emptied and they were sauntering over there. Now Kinderchuk's shoving at uh, Mark at uh, Don Murdoch, that may jumps in, and everybody starts milling around again. Well, he's the lot of the Rangers, the impetus to come back. And Bridgman and Heaslip are going back at each other again. And Bridgman is really throwing the right hands on Mark Heaslip. Everybody really upset with number 19 for the Rangers because of the fact... Oh, now Hoyt had just clipped Johnstone who doesn't have his helmet. Oh, oh Johnstone's taking a beating. Johnstone's taking a beating. Johnstone is just failing, trying to hang on to protect himself, but this time he's willing. And Bernie Perot's got a hold of John Davidson now. Now Barry Dean has a hold of Murdoch. And Kenner Chuck with Wade Thomas, and oh, everybody's breaking out. Now John Ferguson, the general manager for the uh, New York Rangers, has jumped down in the players' bench. As is Nick Fatuyu, their enforcer, who is on the player bench now, wearing the gray suit. Nick Fatiu. Everything's just a big schmozzle now. As Hoyt has got over there, he's got a hold of John Davis has got a hold of him. And I would have to say Eddie Johnson's now going to the dressing room as he has really battered up his face from Dave Hoyta. Richmond is still at he slipped. Tom Bladen is really upset with that he slipped. He must have cut him with the stick on that penalty to Bob Kelly. Bobby, an interesting point that John Davidson, all during that set to never removed his mask, which shows he's smart, but maybe not honorable. Oh, oh who's this that's cut up? That's Hayslip. Mark Hayslip uh, is pretty well now. now They've got a turmoil at the bench directly below us. Nick Fatuyu in a gray suit is in there. 
And then uh, the Spectrum security people over as maybe Spatulio tried to get onto the ice or into the bench and was being heckled by fans from behind. I think that's what happened. He was being heckled by the Flyer fans here, and uh, they were uh, up on the edge of the bench there trying to keep the fans away from the players and the players away from the fans. And, but it... Oh, everything broke out. Tommy Bladen is still incensed because he's got to look like a very nasty cut on the forehead. And Mel Bridgman's got blood all over his uniform. It doesn't appear to be cut, but I think it might be the blood of uh, Mark Kieslip. But his face looked pretty battered. But Tommy Blade still trying to be restrained by Don D'Amico and by Rick LaPointe, his teammate. He is, very, he is cut pretty bad. And uh, we're just speculating in how he must have got caught because uh, him and Heeslip were having exchanged words in the corner to Freddie France left. This is when everything all broke out. Well, while you're talking, I'm getting extra paper out because we ought to have a bundle of penalties here. We'll have to wait to uh, John, or Bruce Hood goes over and to the penalty box to give Lou Nolan. Now, now there's uh, some action going down in the runway of the New York Rangers, the runway which leads up to the Ranger dressing room. And I think what it is is the security people here and the ushers for the spectrum have jumped down into the runway to make sure that nobody gets after the Ranger players or general manager John Ferguson. But Well, I think John D'Amico's saying, let's open the gate and let uh, Hayslip get in. Well, Eddie Johnson's the first one to go yeah. in. And uh, he was just manhandled by Dave Hoyda. And John Davidson just came charging out of the net to uh, pull him off and it seemed like everything was quieting down and then how Davidson got off and J Johnson and um, Dave Hoyt went at it again as John Stone makes his way into the dressing room Mark Heaslip will be going into the dressing room probably too and now Esposito is over talking to Bruce Hood and the location Bob Kelly was originally tabbed and his penalty is up on the board for interference and now they're piling over here as there's a great deal of turmoil at the uh, Ranger player bench at the rear part of it as the Spectrum uniformed attendants are trying to form a wall uh, along the glass uh, that separates the players from the first row of participants and spectators. And the Flyers are over there as are the Rangers, but now rather than participants, they are spectators at the turmoil in the Ranger player bench. And there's still, uh, I, I think the fact that uh, play, or the fans here from about four or five rows up we're taunting the Rangers and, and uh, trying to get their dander up, which they did very easily. And now everything seems to be calmed down. And there's just a load of security and guards around and ushers to make sure that nobody can get at the players. I wonder if Rude Hus Hood might call a termination here and play the four minutes and 22 seconds remaining as the start of the third period and play it as a running time rather than go in now when tempers are flaring as now the Rangers are picking up gloves and sticks. Seems like they're trying to uh, get uh, the Flyers black and white gloves and sticks on one side and the Rangers red, white and blue gloves.